What if the Axis powers didn't collapse? Three months ago I uploaded a video asking about the popular and kinda generic question what would happen if the Axis powers won the Second World War. It ended with Germany collapsing due to a civil war and Japan due to independence movements. But what if that didn't happen? What if the Axis powers didn't collapse? In this timeline Heinrich Himmler succeeds Hitler as Führer of the Greater German Reich. Himmler would expand its borders. Since he was also the Reichsfuhrer of the Order State of Burgundy he unites his two Realsam. He also brings an end to the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia General Government, Reichskommissariat Nederland and Reichskommissariat Squiz. He also turns Denmark into a Reichskommissariat. But Himmler wasn't done yet and he invaded the Russian and later Turkic warlords in Siberia. Central Asia becomes part of Alfred Rosenberg's Reichskommissariat Turkestan, while the rest is transformed into the Reichskommissariat Siberian under Reinhard Heydrich. Heydrich only controls Yekaterinburg, now Katerinburg, Humanomsk, Novosibirsk, now New Siberian, and the lands connecting them, while the rest is in anarchy. Meanwhile as Rosenberg becomes old Turkestan is increasingly ruled by the Turkestan Legion which is at this point the Turkestan Army. The head of government is Bey Mirza Hayef. Germany also invades Sweden and formed Reichskommissariat Squedden under Nikolaus von Falkenhorst. The West did nothing but sanctions. In 1958 the free officers overthrow the Iraqi monarchy but then Italy, Turkey, Iran and Saudi Arabia invade. Saudi Arabia annexes Landstag were part of the Ottoman Empire in 1914, Italy annexes Jordan, Turkey annexes Mosul, Iran annexes Iraq. Saudi Arabia and Turkey agree for Saudi Arabia to annex some border lands to formally end the Sykes-Picot borders. In 1962 a plane of the Luftwaffe was shot down in Switzerland and Himmler blames Italy for it and invades the country. Italy hoped the other members of the Istanbul Pact would join the war on their side, but they fear Germany and Japan is busy in China and India. Turkey even joined the war on side of Germany. After just a few months the war ends. Germany annexes Marseille Savoy to Chino the Alpine foothills and the Adriatic littoral. Turkey annexes the Dickens, Greek Asian islands, Cyprus and most of Italian Levant, and the independent state of Croatia annexes the Kingdom of Croatia. Ethiopia, Somalia, Eritrea, Romania, Algeria, Libya, and Egypt gain independence with Egypt retaking the Suez and Sinai Peninsula. Greece, Montenegro, Albania, and Italy become German puppet states with Iberia, Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, Iraq, and Iran rejoining the Axis. Germany is especially interested in Romania, Iraq, and Iran because of their oil fields. Algeria, Libya, Egypt, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and Oman forms the Arab League. They are however closely allied to Germany. In 1964 Saad bin Abdelaziz ibn Saad got overthrown by his family and Turkish and German forces invade the country. Turkey annexes Hejaz, Yemen annexes Asir and Nadran and the rest becomes the emirate of Jabal Shamar under Tal bin Abdelaziz al-Rashid. But it is just a German puppet state. When in 1979 the Pahlavi dynasty was overthrown Iran too got invaded. Turkey annexes Iraq and Kuwait and the Pahlavi dynasty is restored. Germany now secured itself the Middle East and Turkey regains its former territories. This could be followed by an oil crisis in the United States and other Western countries as Germany can simply cut of their oil supply. Himmler annexes Reichskommissariat Denmark, Norwegian Sweden and Ostaland in 1971. In 1979 when Himmler dies with Otto Ernst Rimmer succeeding him. In Spain after Franco dies Juan Carlos I actually is an absolute monarch just as Franco indented, and he doesn't restore democracy. In Croatia Bosnians and Serbs are genocide by anti-Pavlik in an even more brutal way than Germany itself. Meanwhile in East Asia the 70s revolts in China, India, and Indonesia broke out. Japan could suppress them, but in order to keep hold of them they elevate them to the status of co-equal member states of the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere a position only Thailand hold. India and Azad Hind hold the Calcutta Conference in which they agree to reunite. The government in New Delhi is in charge, but India joins the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. Indian and Afghan forces invade Pakistan in 1979. Afghanistan annexes Pashtistan and Balochistan, while the rest goes to India. 
Nepal and Sri Lanka also fall to India. Afghanistan also makes the decision to join the Jeeks. The Yemeni civil war becomes a proxy war between Germany and Egypt, and Germany wins with the monarchy still in power. Oman, Egypt, Libya, and Algeria cut all ties with Germany. For the U.S., the defeat in World War II leads to Republic Thomas E. Dewey becoming president in 1948. He wins a second term in 1952. In 1956, it's Kefauver who defeats Adlai Stevenson II in the 1956 Democratic Party presidential primaries, becomes president as Eisenhower's World War II legacy wouldn't be one of victory, but one of defeat. Nixon wins in 1960 and then a second term in 1964. With Nixon not being a candidate for the Republican Party, Ronald Reagan becomes president in 1968. He serves for two terms. In 1976, Jimmy Carter still becomes president. In 1980, George H. W. Bush becomes president, and then again in 1984. In the 80s, tensions are at an all-time high, and then Zinjiang erupts in a revolution aiming pan-Turkism. Reichskommissariat Turkestan came to their aid, and Japan declared war on them, bringing Germany into the war. The U.S. goes to war against Germany in order to liberate Europe. But then a Japanese ship got sunk in Port Meiji, and Japan accuses Australia bringing the Jeeps against the free world. Siegfried Muller blitzkrieged the Allies in West Africa, but the Germans in the South were yearly defeated and lose Namibia, northern Mozambique, Zambia, Malawi, and southern Angola. Shortly later, Middle Africa collapses. In the East, Japan has to abandon Xinjiang, and Afghanistan switches loyalty. In the north, Japan is pushed to the Lena River, and in Urchitsk, Reichskommissariat Fernost is created. In Operation Torch, the Allies take over Spanish Morocco. They then land in Iberia, however, unsuccessfully. They, however, defeat Japan in the Pacific Ocean around the same time Germany pushes Japan out of the Far Eastern Republic and towards the Amur. At this point, the war is a stalemate, and a peace conference is held in Cairo. Germany takes the far eastern Republic of Xinjiang from Japan, but returns Mongolia. The Allies take southern Africa, Morocco, and Japanese islands in the Pacific, including the Philippines and Indonesia. Japan would be the biggest loser in this conflict and resumes its alliance with Germany. India, meanwhile, returns to its neutrality policies. The world is now divided in two, with the Axis in Eurasia and the Allies in the Americas, Africa, and Oceania. With the victory in World War III, the Republicans under Bob Dole win in 1988 and 1992. In 1996 and 2000, Bill Clinton wins the U.S. elections, and in 2000, for George W. Bush. In 2008 and in 2012, Obama wins, and in 2016 and 2020, Bernie Sanders. In 1984, Ukraine becomes part of the Reich, and in 1997, Rimmer dies with Otto Voigt becoming Führer. In 2011, he announces the annexation of Caucasian and Moscovian, which means Germany reached its AL line goal. Japan under Naruhito is a strong power in East Asia and would massacre the Koreans and resettle Korea with Japanese people. A fourth world war is on the horizon. In this timeline, Japan, but especially Germany, are dominant powers that can rival the United States. Democracy and liberty died in Eurasia, with just a handful of bastions of democracy remain kanji. If you liked the episode, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.